Fighting with Paddle TV, and I'm here with yet another full on gear review. And in this video, I'm pretty excited because I have been looking forward to testing this kayak for quite some time. In fact, a lot of you have asked me to test this kayak. It's a very popular kayak and it's truly unique. It combines portability and performance. Now that's not a normal combination, but it claims that it does it and I can't wait to test it out. So let's get this thing built while I tell you a bit more about it. The Pakiak Bluefin 142 has a retail price of 1,895 US dollars. It's 14 feet 2 inches long, it's 24 inches wide, it weighs 59 pounds or 27 kilos, it has a capacity of 300 pounds or 136 kilos, and its primary use is touring. The Bluefin 142 uses a tongue and groove connection with stainless steel sealing latches and silicone gaskets for waterproofness. It comes with a zippered bag that has wheels and backpack straps. Like most touring kayaks, it has deck bungees and perimeter lines. It has two hatches to access two waterproof compartments. In the cockpit, you've got a back band, a contoured foam seat, and adjustable foot pegs. A couple of other things that are worth noting is that it comes ready for a rudder to be installed if that's what you want. And the kayak is designed, molded, and assembled in the USA. One of the features that I don't really understand why they don't promote more is the fact that in the bag, it's an ideal outdoor drumming set. Well, I love the looks of this kayak already and I haven't even gotten it wet. But before I do, let's talk real quick about portability and assembly. Uh, starting with portability. This thing fitting in a bag, it's awesome. For what you have here, it's truly awesome. A hard, a 14 foot hard shell kayak that fits in a backpack or a bag that has wheels on it that makes it pretty easy to move around. That being said, it is 59 pounds and with the pack itself, it's probably more like 65 pounds. It's not a light kit to move around. And so in terms of portability, it's incredible that what it does, but it's still a heavy unit to move around. Um, and so you don't want to have to carry it a long way. Now let's talk ease of assembly. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, really, they say under three minutes and absolutely I get that. I think it probably took me three minutes on my very first go. Very, very simple. And not only is it very simple, but it actually is confidence ins inspiring when you're putting it together. You're like, you know what? This is solid. This is not going to fall apart on me. Love the assembly of this thing. Two thumbs up. Time to test this thing on the water though. So let's go hit it. Get this boat wet. All right, so a quick break from reviewing the gear to give you guys a very valuable tip. Now, this is probably more important than any, you know, technical tip you're going to get because this tip is all about looking good on the water. It all comes down to the flip. You got to, oh, that wasn't good. As you take the stroke, just add a little flip into the paddle stroke. Oh, oh, that wasn't a very good one either. Oh yeah, the days are pretty short this time of year, so we're running out of time, but I've had about two hours to paddle this thing around, and that's enough to get a really good taste for what this kayak is all about. And so here's what I can tell you. Let's start with comfort, because typically 
a portable kayak, you give up some comfort for the portability. Is that the case with the Pakiak Bluefin 142? Well, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you do. You give up some comfort for the portability. Does that mean it's an uncomfortable kayak? Absolutely not. Now, the seat is it's just a contoured foam seat pad. And actually, it's pretty nice. I mean, for two hours paddling, my butt isn't sore. So that's a good sign. The back band, it's fine. What uh, I do notice, though, is the back band straps are, uh, they're starting to, I feel them a, a little bit there. That's largely because I've been playing around with my edges so much, and this, this boat doesn't have hip pads to stop me. So those straps are, are stopping my weight. I'm kind of leaning against them. Um, but, you know, all in all, the back bands actually provides great support. Uh, now, space-wise, I am six foot two, and I am pretty much the max for this kayak. Now I do have long legs, but still, I'm not even using the foot pegs. I'm right against the bulkhead here. That being said, I'm very comfortable. There's lots of room around the cockpit here. Uh, tons of room for your legs, and my feet don't feel squished at all, but you really, you couldn't be much taller, if any taller than me, and still fit in this kayak. So that's something that's good to know. Now let's talk about stability. Stability, uh, starting with primary stability, how it just feels when you're sitting like this. And you know what? It's a stable kayak. 24 inches is not a wide kayak. So this isn't designed for stability. This is designed to give up some stability to gain performance, like any you know, higher performance touring kayak or sea kayak does. Uh, it's, it's still, I mean, I, I can, I don't have to hold my paddle. I don't feel any wobby, wobbliness whatsoever just sitting here. So solid initial stability. Now, secondary stability, when you're on edge here, it's decent. It's got decent st secondary stability. I can sit on edge without too much problem here. It's not exceptional secondary stability. It, it doesn't feel like I'm just locked in here on edge. So what that really said to me is that this kayak wasn't designed for really high performance paddling. It, it was designed for speed, but it's not designed for aggressive edging, um, for paddling in really rough conditions. Uh, it's not that it can't do that, it's just it's not the focus of this kayak. That actually brings us right to performance. How does this thing perform? And if I didn't put this thing together, if you just plot me in this thing, I would say I'm in a normal sea kayak. This is not, a, doesn't feel like a portable, portable kayak at all. And that's a great thing. Uh, now the flip side to that is I wouldn't say to myself, wow, this is like the most maneuverable, high performance, you know, greatest paddling sea kayak I've ever been in. Absolutely not. This is a case where portability does cost some performance. There's no doubt. And, and some of the features, the way it's designed, I can tell it's, it has to be designed that way in order for it to do the transformer thing it does. They don't really have any options. If they didn't have to worry about portability, is that the best design for performance? Well, no. That's a compromise they have to, they have to make. Does that mean it's bad performing? Absolutely not. This thing, you know, what is it designed for? You know, what does it do well? It tracks beautifully. Uh, it doesn't have a rudder or a skeg, but it still tracks very well. It doesn't have a lot of rocker, so that's kind of what it's designed to do, whether that's intentional or not. Uh, it, it's fast. It uh, accelerates well. You know, it, it's a great touring kayak going from A to B, covering some ground, feeling confident doing that, dealing with a variety of conditions. Um, yeah, I, I think it'd be great for that. Now, getting into rougher conditions uh, where you really want to be more maneuverable and edging this kayak well no yes it can do it absolutely would i take this into small surf yeah would i take it into class one two whitewater absolutely would i push it much more than that no probably not not without expecting or being willing to swim and the reason is there's no thigh hooks there's nothing holding my legs in here at all there's nothing really even to grab hold of so if you know you don't have you lose control and if you did flip well it's going to be harder to roll does that mean you can't roll it no you can roll this thing but it's going to be a lot harder because you don't really have anything to grip 
the kayak with. The other thing to note about rolling this kayak is that the back deck is quite high. It's right in the middle of my life jacket almost. And so rolling up on the back deck is not an option in this kayak. You're gonna have to come over the side or swing your body forward. It's gonna be a bit of a modified roll for a lot of people. Does it mean, again, doesn't mean you can't roll this thing. It just, it's not going to be the most roller friendly kayak. Now, the other thing I've noticed with this high back here and even the high deck, because there's so much room here, is that for this life jacket, a standard sea kayaking life jacket, it's being pushed up. And, you know, I find it, I'm, I'm constantly adjusting it and pushing it back down. Uh, if I, next time I paddle this boat, what I'm going to be using is a recreational life jacket that has the high back on it and the mesh back here so that it's not constantly being, feeling like it's being pushed up and I don't have any material between me and the back of this boat. But anyway, that's just kind of an interesting side note. One of the other things that affects the performance is the lack of hip support or hip pads. There's nothing stopping my butt from moving back and forth in this boat when I'm on edge. And again, there's nothing to make it feel it, you know, like a, like a high performance shoe. It's not hugging me. So you lose performance from that. That's just the reality of it. So with all of that said, considering comfort, stability, performance, who is this kayak for? Well, this kayak is for somebody who is willing to pay a premium and give up some comfort and performance for its portability. And someone who wants a sea kayak or a touring kayak. Does it do the job well? It does the job magnificently. It's a great solution for that. Is it for somebody who wants to uh, have a sea kayak or touring kayak that they can really push themselves in? Well, probably not because it doesn't have the outfitting that you need. It's not a maneuverable kayak. It's designed for covering ground. Is it worth the price tag? $1,895 US dollars for this sucker. Now that's not a cheap kayak, but that's not an expensive kayak either. Any high performing touring kayak, you can expect to pay between 1,300 to 2,500 or even more, $3,500 for. So for a kayak that performs as this does and has the portability factor, well, $1,895 is a lot of money, but it's not too much for this thing if portability is important to you. That's all I gotta say about the Pakiak. In general, two big thumbs up. I really enjoyed paddling this boat and I'm glad the, the folks out there, you guys, encouraged me to test this boat. Uh, I've been really excited to do it. It did not disappoint. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Pal TV if you haven't already and stay tuned because there's lots more kayak reviews coming your way.